Raleigh and, and, and his leadership and his style. Okay. I mentioned that you're part of the golden era of uh, point guards in New York. you also part of the golden era in the point guards in the NBA with Kevin Johnson, Tim Hardaway, Gary Payton, Jason Kidd. Who are your top three people? John Stockton, as you mentioned earlier, who are the top three guys that you like to compete against? Man, I could never say that. Like, it's just too many dudes, and I got too much respect to, to give a top mm-hmm. three because I'm going to leave somebody out. Like, all those names okay. you mentioned, Tim, KJ, Stockton, Sam, Mark Jackson, uh, Nick Van Exel. Uh, I know I'm missing some people, but all those names. Right. Uh, okay. You know, I, I played against a lot. Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson. Uh, there's really no top three. They're always a problem. But you know, you know your, your man Tim Hardaway from Shy. You know he was a problem. They all like I played against a lot of tough guys. Okay. Is there anybody in the league that you ever watched that you said, "Why is this guy getting more shine?" Uh, I don't know. So many. That that's one of them I had to think about. I'm sure there's some uh, out there. I mean, you look at Derek Harper, who's never been an All Star. Mm-hmm. He's been a great player for years. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I, I'm sure I can come. I can't think of it right now. But I'm sure there's a lot of those players out there. And to wrap it up, what I want to do, you know, we got the whole – I'm not going to do the Jordan LeBron thing because that thing has been beat to death, and I never want to hear that even. I don't ever want to hear that conversation again, let alone bother you with it. But the, everybody talks about the Supreme I – mean, uh, uh, the, uh, the Mount Rushmore. I call it the Supreme Court because I don't think, like, like when I asked you about the top three guys that you competed against, great answer anyway, but I, I think four is too few. So if you had to assemble a Supreme Court to de- describe basketball, who would be on that Supreme Court? You know, nine guys that would say, hey, this is basketball. Five guys. Okay, N- uh, nine, nine, like the Supreme Court of the United States. Nine guys. Wow. I got to go old school. <coughs> yeah, you got to hold on, man. Something just All right, take your time, bro. Take your time. So you said nine guys, nine players? Yeah. Nine players. <coughs> nine players. Uh, Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. Larry Bird, mm-hmm. uh, uh, LeBron James, mm-hmm. Keem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. After that, I got to kind of think. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I got to think. Uh, you gave me nine. Five I can give you right off top. Uh, Shaq. Oh, okay. Shaq. Uh, Three more. Kobe. Uh, Dak, who else? <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Oh, Isaiah Thomas. I can't mm. forget Isaiah. Uh, and Dr. J. Awesome. And I know it's tough. You played for a bunch of teams. It's favorite team, man. <clears throat> Favorite teammate, I have a few of them, but Kevin Garnett, and I only played mm. with him a little while for a year. But he was so, number one, intense and focused, but he mm-hmm. was a good dude. He took care of the young fellas. He was always mm. respectable, humble, respect his, uh, the history, uh, funny, great stories. Like, he just was like one of those all-around dudes. When you see him on the court, if you're just watching him on the court, you're not going to get Kevin uh, KG. He's like so much more than than, than the scowl and all that. <clears throat> man, you know what, Rob, man? Thank you, bro. That was, that was an awesome list. Thank you for your time. And, again, being one of your biggest fans, I really appreciate you giving me your time. Welcome to the man. team. If I ever do anything for you, you ever, you know, say if you ever need to talk on the show or whatever, uh, I have an international audience. I'm building every day. I would love to have you back on the show. Uh, congratulations to you and your son going to the University of Wisconsin. For those who know, it's Todd uh, Strickland. He'll be dominating. Appreciate it. Hopefully. 
I'll be a fan. Uh, uh, again, big fan. Thank you for being on the show. And for the first time in your life, your career, you're a bench one. So, welcome to the end of the day. <laughs> Okay, All right, man. No, thank you again, Rock. All, All right, right. Thank you. feel better, brother. And again, thank you, Rock. Uh, I'm not going. I'm a. I'm gonna yammer on for about eight minutes, man. We got about thirty minutes to go on the show. Um, that was. I think that was an awesome experience. I am a gigantic Rock Strickland fan. For those who listen to the show, you know that. That's actually one of my. If if he could. He could. He didn't want to name a bunch of the guys because he, those are his peers, and he played against them. But if you ask me to rank the guys, Rob Strickland, in regards to point guard in the history, of, in, in my history, because I can't talk about what happened before 1979. If you ask me to make a list, it would be Magic Johnson, Jason Kidd, my all-time favorite player, Isaiah Thomas, Rob Strickland, uh, Tim Hardaway, Mark Jackson, Gary Payton. And, and, and I will continue from that point. And that's right off the top of my head. What is – Rod Strickland presents what is definitely missing from basketball today, and that is the player who can actually play basketball. We spoke briefly before we got on the air this afternoon, and I told Rod that. It, and I told Rod that his skill set is missing. Russell Westbrook, excellent ball player, but he needs to rush. If, if the Oklahoma City Thunder had Rod Strickland, there's no way in hell they they miss out in the first round ever again with Rod Strickland, uh, uh, a Rod Strickland type, a with Paul George, Russell Westbrook, and Carmelo Anthony. It would be insane. And you know what? It looks like I'm not going to end the show early because I got a caller. Welcome, welcome to the end of the bench. What's your name? What you want to talk about? Hey, what's going on, B man? It's at the Aquarius, man. I was uh, listening to the show called. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Talk to me. Tell me something good, brother. Hey, man. I I, I know you 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 got a uh, feeling yourself because I know how, how much of a Rod Strickland fan you was. Just like oh, I was yeah. kind of happy when he said that about David Robinson. So you know I had to call oh, him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You 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 being number one first fan on earth. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, man. Rod Strickland has always been a special ball player from the first room time. When I saw him in Street Smith, I saw the dude in Chicago fun times, and they was talking about Ben Wilson, who in Chicago is basketball royalty, and they mentioned him. And I was like, what's up with this guy? He came to Chicago, set it on fire. I've been a fan since. You know, it wasn't no YouTube back then, and you couldn't just go pull him up. You had to read about him. When I saw him play, he facil- like, 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 like I always say, I like facilitators. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, Russell Westbrook are all excellent ball players. But for my entertainment dollar, give me Grant Hill, give me Magic Johnson, LeBron James, Jason Kidd, Rod Strickland, even, you know, guys like Sam Cassell, Hardaway. I will always remember. He mentioned Tim Hardaway. One of the one of my major reasons for being a gigantic Tim Hardaway senior fan is I saw Tim Hardaway go 0 for 17. So at 10 points, had, 10, had 12 assists and like 14 rebounds and a victory. How many times your star player go 0 for 17 and y'all win? Again, that's what I was saying right before I put you on the line. That skill set is missing in the NBA. 0 for 17, dog, and you win. People always say, oh, well, Rod couldn't shoot. For a dude to not be able to shoot, allegedly, I've never seen anybody stand in front of that dude too long. You stood in front of Ron Strickland, and you saw the big number. If the, and for those who don't know, the numbers on the front of your jersey are smaller than the ones on the back, on the back of the jersey. The ones on the back of the jersey is a big number. If you stood in front of Ron Strickland too long, you saw Strickland and nine. You didn't know what team he played for. As far as you know, he played for the Stricklands, and his number was one or 11. So, yeah, man, I, you're right. I am still of myself, big-time Ron Strickland fan. And, uh, yeah, it was good to hear him. And you know what? I'm glad he complimented David Robinson now that you speak, broke, spoke that up. David Robinson, people talk about David Robinson like he was Horace Grant or somebody these days. Well, the greatest center is up. Yeah, that's Shaq, that's this that's guy, that's this guy, that guy. They, this dude scored 71 points in the game. They do have a quadruple double. He had a quadruple double in the game. He had a quadruple double. 
him, Elijah Wan, well, and a couple other people are the only people in the history of this sport to have a quadruple double. Well, so Willie, the Rock. Was it Willie Anderson? Yeah, yeah, I think Willie I know Anderson. I know it was a guard. Team, it mate. Who? You know what I'm looking at? Yeah, guard. Right? I thought it was Willie Anderson. Yeah. Triple double. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big Rod Strickland fan. Uh, 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 it's uh, uh, it was a pleasure talking to him. And then it was good. Uh, Nate Thurman, Alvin Robinson, who was also a star, oh, was Alvin, Akeem Olajuwon, and David Robinson are the people who did quadruple doubles. Nate Thurman had 22 points, 14 boards, 13 assists, 12 blocks. Alvin Robinson, he probably did it with steals, 20 points, 11 rebounds. 10 assists, 10 steals. I figured as much. Elijah Wan, uh, it don't give his stat line. But uh, I knew when he said Alvin Robinson, it was going to be with steals. His still used to lock people down. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, since we're talking about the Spurs and the Spurs are your team, how are you feeling right now with, uh, men- with the mention of your guy saying, I'm ready to uh, pick him up and put him down and lean towards L.A.? I, I'm until the Spurs come out and say something about it. I still think that <laughs> reckless speculation. Yeah, because the thing with um, with Carmelo, for instance, when Denver was he was going to the Knicks, for instance, mm-hmm. Denver was still giving out press releases like, okay, he he wants to be traded, of course. He was denying it, but at least the team was saying something. The Spurs haven't said anything, man. I mean, hey, you can't deny it. Who's 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 saying it from Kawhi's um, side yeah. of the? Um, but it had, it had to come from somebody because every news source had it all at one time. So I don't know. The Spurs but, need want him to stay. But if if somebody's not going to be um, happy, man, you got to try to get the best deal for them. And I'll say the best deal is Celtics. Mm. Okay. I don't, want, I don't want anything that the Lakers is throwing at them, to be honest with you. Julius Randle, eh, I don't want Alonzo Ball because his daddy going to come along with him. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think that the the um, the Celtics can offer them to me with as far as talent offering the best package, man. Even if they swap him and Kyrie, I okay. The question I have for you then is this: If you if you're the Celtics, what are you? Cause, okay. We already know it's one dude that is not going to get traded to Spurs, and he goes by the name of Channing Tatum. Kyrie may go because he's on the last year of his deal. He's, he's, he's as talented as he is, and as much as Kyrie is an asset to whatever team he shows up on, he's on the last year of his deal. So the Spurs are not going to accept Kyrie Irving unless they can get a commitment to him. It would who goes along. Right, with it that. wouldn't make sense for them to accept him. The only way that they would probably accept him is if they were able to throw Paul Casal's contract into it. Mm. But then you you're getting rid of an ex, a, a contract for basically Kyrie would be an expiring contract just in case he don't resign. Makes sense. I mean, this is going to be Personally. interesting in the next couple of weeks. Man. Personally, I would take Brandon Ingram because you got a 6'10", 6'11", guy who can put the ball on the floor, who can shoot from distance. Playing, he knows how to be coached because he comes from Duke. He's playing a great popular system. Is he going to be uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard? Under no circumstances am I saying that. But he could potentially be a bona fide scorer. He could turn into Channing Tatum, properly coached. But the only problem with that is I want, I want Jalen Brown, Rosier, and that pick, man. 
Now you're playing fantasy basketball. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I mean, 